Hey there, folks, I am Kenny. In this captivating YouTube video, join me as we delve into the legendary tale of relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine. We'll explore the historical background, trace its origins, and examine the debate surrounding its authenticity. Get ready to uncover the secrets and unravel the mysteries behind this fascinating event. So grab your popcorn, sit back, and let's embark on a thrilling journey through history together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss out on my exciting content. Cheers to the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine. Now, I will tell you the story of relinquishing one's military command over a glass of wine. It all happened during the reign of Emperor Taijo, the founder of the Sung Dynasty. With a vision to strengthen central authority and prevent ambitious generals from seizing power, Emperor Taijo devised a clever plan to ensure loyalty amongst his high-ranking military officers. He wanted them to willingly relinquish their military command, and what better way to do it than over a glass of wine? You see, not long after Emperor Taijo ascended the throne, two military commanders rebelled against his rule. This rebellion deeply troubled the emperor, making him ponder the reasons behind the endless cycle of warfare that had plagued China since the end of the Tang Dynasty. He realized that the root cause lay in the excessive power wielded by his ministers and generals. Emperor Taizhou believed that if he could centralize military authority under his own command, the frequency of conflicts would diminish. So, one day, Emperor Taizhou decided to host a grand banquet in the palace and invited several distinguished generals who had played crucial roles in the founding of the dynasty. Amongst the guests were renowned figures such as Xi Shu Sin and Wang Shenqi. As the evening progressed and the wine flowed, Emperor Taizhou took a moment to express his gratitude to his loyal generals. He raised his glass and said, Without your support, I would not be where I am today. But let me tell you, being an emperor is not all it's cracked up to be. The pressure is immense, and sometimes I envy the common people who have a simpler life. I haven't had a good night's sleep since taking the throne. As Emperor Taizhou expressed his sleepless nights and the constant worry that came with being an emperor, his ministers couldn't help but be concerned. They eagerly questioned why the emperor couldn't get a good night's sleep. With a chuckle, Emperor Taizhou replied, It's all because of this prestigious throne. Who can guarantee that no one envies this noble position? Well, you can imagine the shock on the ministers' faces as they realized the implications of the emperor's words. Panic set in, and they all fell to their knees, exclaiming, Your majesty, how can you say such things? The realm is stable, and there is no unrest. Who would dare challenge your authority? But Emperor Taizhou, with a furrowed brow, shook his head and said, You are all my brothers, who have endured hardships with me. Of course, I trust you. However, I fear that your subordinates might rebel. What will you do then? The ministers, realizing the gravity of the situation, felt the impending disaster looming over them. With tears in their eyes, they beseeched Emperor Taizhou to guide them through this predicament. Seeing their sincere plea, Emperor Taizhou nodded in satisfaction, signaling that if they were to surrender their military command, he would ensure their peaceful retirement. The following day, during the court assembly, each minister submitted a memorial requesting to resign from their current positions and live out their remaining years in peace. Emperor Taizhou, without hesitation, approved their requests and reclaimed their military authority. Just like that, without shedding a drop of blood, Emperor Taizhou successfully centralized the dispersed military command back into his own hands. And thus, the famous historical event known as the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine came to pass. Now, you might be surprised to learn that there is actually no official historical record of this event. That's right, the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine, despite being such a significant event, is nowhere to be found in the official historical texts. Instead, it gained popularity through fictional writings that vividly describe the scene. Most accounts of this event often reference Li Tao's portrayal in his book, Continuation of the Comprehensive Mirror for Aid in Government, Volume 2. However, experts have raised doubts about the credibility of Li Tao's account. 
They argue that his sources were not based on official historical records, leading to a lack of trustworthiness. The veritable records of Emperor Taijo, which chronicles Emperor Taijo's daily activities as recorded by court historians, and the history of Sung, compiled by historians during the Yuan Dynasty, both authoritative works, do not mention this event at all. Also, the individuals involved in this supposed event were not even in the capital city of Kaifeng when it allegedly took place. Talk about a major plot twist. According to Li Tao's account and continuation of the comprehensive mirror for aid in government, he places the event in July of 961. But here's the problem. By that time, key players like Shi Xu Xin and Wang Shen Qi had already been assigned to work in other regions. They weren't even in Kaifeng, let alone present for this legendary encounter with Emperor Tai Zhou. So, how on earth could the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine have happened if the people involved weren't even there? At the time when this supposed event took place, the Empress Dowager had just passed away. During the morning period, it was customary to refrain from drinking and revelry. So, inviting guests for a round of drinks during such a solemn time just doesn't add up does it? Imagine the scene, Emperor Taijo, grieving for his beloved Empress Dowager, suddenly decides to gather his ministers and propose a toast to relinquishing their military command. It's like throwing a party in the middle of a funeral. Talk about bad timing, Emperor Taijo. Now, get ready for a spicy rebuttal to the claim that the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine story is nothing but a hoax. We're about to dive into the argument that challenges the belief that Emperor Taijo couldn't have hosted a drinking party during the morning period for the Empress Dowager. Now, some people argue that although the Empress Dowager passed away in June, according to traditional customs, the Emperor could end the morning period after just 25 days. Wait, what? Only 25 days? That's right. In regular circumstances, when parents pass away, their children are expected to observe a mourning period of three years, which technically amounts to 25 months. You see, since 24 months make up two years, an additional month brings it to the full three years. However, as the ruler responsible for the affairs of the entire nation, Emperor Taijo couldn't possibly observe mourning for a whopping 25 months. That would throw the country into chaos, wouldn't it? So, here's the interesting part. The emperor could use a day to represent a month, effectively substituting 25 days of mourning for 25 months. Now, let's do some math, shall we? If Empress Dowager Du passed away on the 2nd of June, the emperor could have ended the mourning period by the end of June. That means by July, Emperor Taijo would have been free to enjoy a feast with his generals and raise a glass to the famous relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine incident. Well, talk about a plot twist. It seems like there's a solid argument against the claim that the timing of the event clashes with morning customs. Emperor Taijo had a legitimate window of opportunity to host such a gathering without any breach of protocol. One of the main points raised by those doubting the veracity of the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine is the absence of official documentation. Many people often cite Li Tao's account in continuation of the Comprehensive Mirror for Aid in Government, Volume 2, as their primary source for this story. However, some experts argue that Li Tao's materials were not derived from official historical records, making them less reliable. In fact, Li Tao himself acknowledged the lack of official sources in a footnote he added to the story, saying, The relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine is a significant event. But unfortunately, it is not recorded in the history of the Sung Dynasty or the veritable records of Emperor Tai Zhou. It's a pity. So, I am now recording it again in detail. Li Tao primarily relied on the writings of three literary figures from the Sung Dynasty, including Shi Ma Guang Su Shui Gi Wen. Shi Ma Guang was a respected official and historian who played a major role in compiling the influential historical work Jiggy Tong Jian, also known as Comprehensive Mirror for Aid in Government. With Shi Ma Guang's reputation and expertise in the field, it lends credibility to the account of relinquishing military command over a glass of wine. So, despite the absence of official documentation, the reliance on reputable sources like Shi Ma Guang's writings adds weight to the credibility of the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine story. Let's take a trip down memory lane and reminisce about my school days. Ah, the good old days when I studied history and came across the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine incident in my high school textbooks. 
fast forward to university, where I encountered articles questioning the authenticity of this legendary tale. I even had lively debates about it in class. In fact, the academic world has extensively discussed this very topic. As for me, personally, I have my doubts about the veracity of this story. Why, you ask? Well, it's because the accounts of this event became more abundant in later dynasties, while there were relatively few records from the Sung Dynasty itself. This raises some eyebrows, doesn't it? I mean, think about it. If something as significant as the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine had truly occurred, wouldn't we expect to find more detailed records from the period in which it allegedly took place? The fact that the story gained popularity and elaboration in subsequent eras suggests that later literati might have added their creative touch, turning it into a legendary tale rather than a factual event. So, my friends, while it's fascinating to dive into the depths of history and explore captivating stories like this one, it's important to approach them with a critical eye. The lack of contemporary documentation and the evolution of the narrative over time make me personally skeptical about the complete authenticity of the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine incident. Remember, history is a tapestry woven with threads of truth and embellishment, and it's up to us to unravel the mysteries and separate fact from fiction. As we continue our scholarly pursuits, let's keep questioning, challenging, and seeking the truth behind these captivating stories. After all, the journey of historical discovery is as thrilling as the tales themselves. Hey there, lovely viewers. That wraps up our discussion on the intriguing topic of the relinquishing of military command over a glass of wine. Now, I turn to you, my awesome audience. Do you think this story is a true historical event or just an elaborate tale? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Plus, you'll get to enjoy more of my commentary on Chinese history, culture, and artistic treasures. So, tell me, what do you want to hear next? Leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching.